Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. We're going to take a look at the market. Also, there's a brand new metaverse. Yeah, I can't wait to show you. And it's not just the XRP army that is hoping for a ripple win. And wow, do I have a mash of clips that is leaning into showing you that Jay Clayton is not being honest about who he knew before he stepped out of the SEC role. And Japanese lost in translation. Yeah, the Japanese tax. Let me tell you what's really happening. But until then, please do like and subscribe. I'll be right back. Well, look at the market. Yes, it's up. 1.53% over yesterday, sitting at 2.4 trillion. Bitcoin at the time of this recording is just a little over 50,700. It's been bringing the green effect to the entire market. XRP is at 92 cents. VeChain hitting 10%. Woohoo! Finally moving in a very good direction. ADA also, ADA is nice. It's got a gain of 9%. Trading at $1.58. Charles laid out the roadmap for 2022. I think a lot of the Cardano fans are happy with what has happened in 2021 and looking forward to 2022. And then we have sand. It's off 3.8%. Even after the Pricewaterhouse Cooper Hong Kong branch bought some land in their metaverse. I'm kind of surprised. Well, I just know that uh, many people are looking at who's making the moves. And in the top 100, in that first position, we have Kadena. That is a quality, scalable, proof-of-work blockchain that has a very unique smart contract language, considered one of the safest, they say. And the two guys who built it, it's interesting. They also were the first to build the number one blockchain in the very beginning for JP Morgan. And they also were tech leads for the SEC. They're up 26%, actually 63% up on the seven day, trading at $16.57. And then in the second position is Voyager. That is an ERC token, a smart order routing technology. It helps find the best rate on exchanges. It's led by a team of experts that are really skilled in brokerage services. 15% up, trading at $3.51. And then in the third position is Zillica. Oh, finally, Zillica up 14%, trading at $0.08. Cents. Uh, I'm so happy because I have this project and it has just been sitting doing nothing for so long. Well, they just announced that they have a metaverse. This is called Metopolis, and it looks like it's got some... Hmm, possibilities. It's seven day gain is 41%. You just don't know until you play it, but they did give everyone a sneak preview. Let me just see if I can show you. It looks like it could be fun. We just don't know until you play it, right? You got to get into the metaverse and see what's really going on, but it's going to be highly immersive. It's gamified with an XR platform, which will make it the first layer one protocol to do so. Um, I'm just happy to see that we've got some movement and I really do hope it's fun. I have one prediction and that is in 2022, I think um, I am along with a lot of other people going to be doing a lot of meta hopping. All right, I want you to just take a look at my favorite NFT artist who has opened up a metaverse. And this is Aimi Sekiguchi. Yeah, she's going to do something very interesting on the 28th of September or of December. She's a VR artist and she's going to make these Tori, which is a gate that you enter under before you go into a shrine. And if you're lucky to get maybe one of the 70 limited units out of 100 to be sold. Look at that. She will then personalize it for you. And if you get into her metaverse, wow, it's got a lot of really beautiful elements to it. I think she has uh, some really big sponsors behind her. Mm, I just can't wait to play around in her 
coming universe that is going to be a blend of uh, the new and old Japan. I just love it. All right. If you were looking for an update, anything in regards to the SEC versus Ripple case, well, as I do, I often rely on Jim Jimmy James Spilin's Twitter page, but it's a little quiet. It's quiet on the surface. I am sure that it's not so quiet behind the scenes. No doubt everybody is working hard. Now, there is a January 14th deadline for the expert discovery. So keep your eye on his feed for any changes. I think that's one of the first places we'll, we will see an update. And then there is a brand new article out by Siamak Masnavi. He is one of the top journalists in the space. Yes, I can use that word journalist because he is one of the best. He wrote an article and published it about an hour ago and he talks about Lark. Lark from New Zealand, the real OG in crypto. He made a video on the 27th where he said he sincerely hopes that Ripple wins this lawsuit. And that's really great coming from him. Not everybody outside of the XRP community is having that same narrative. He goes on to call the SEC behaving like a schoolyard bully. Yes, and a win would put the SEC in his place. Yeah, I hope so. He went on to say that everybody in crypto should be rooting for a Ripple win. And he is right, because if Ripple doesn't win, it's going to be very ugly for many cryptocurrencies out there. All right, we are going to just take a quick peek at what I posted on Twitter today. I'm not going to play the whole thing for you, just maybe just a 15 seconds of this one segment. This is the uh, place where Jay Clayton landed as an advisor. This is the One River Asset Management Company. And uh, I put four clips together. It's kind of a retrospective a look at what they have been saying since June 2019, uh, all the way to as recent as October 2021. There are three clips in this one, and it just really is interesting that he plays down his holdings in June 2019. 18 months later, they have over a billion dollars in a position with Bitcoin and Ethereum. And he knew, he was very confident that the government would co-opt in, meaning they would adopt it for a kind of co-op use. And talks about payment solutions built on Bitcoin. Hello, you know, the payment solution in this space belongs to Ripple and the digital asset XRP for on-demand liquidity. And here, this is the part I want to show you because it's getting very obvious that Clayton is not telling us the truth because you have the president here, Sebastian Bay, telling us that at the time they set up One River Digital, they started the advisory council. Well, that, that setup of One River Digital took place before, before Jay Clayton left his position at the SEC. So when he tells you that he never even knew these people before he was asked to advise for them, it just can't be true because I want you to just listen to this one portion here. Right. That's part of the reason why uh, when, we started, when we set up One River Digital, we started an advisory council. It was chaired by the former chair of the SEC, Jay Clayton. Uh, he's joined by uh, Courtney Elwood, who it was the uh, former general counsel of the CIA, as well as, as, well as uh, Harold Ford Jr. So, you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, when you say that when you set up the One River Digital, you started an advisory council. Well, you didn't start that advisory council. Uh, I mean, did you go for what? six months without an advisory council. Sounds like from your words right there that when you set up the One River Digital, you started the advisory council. That's what you say. In that case, then Jay Clayton was still at the SEC. I'm just sure that they were talking to him. And yes, he knew all about One River. Just, just what I just have to believe. 
All right, I'm going to tell you that there's a little bit of lost in translation with uh, the Japanese laws for tax. <laughs> I heard some crazy stories out there. What it is is that they revise number six, which is all about how they are going to tax staking. And it's going to be taxed like they tax mining. And it doesn't have anything to do with if you own a crypto, you're going to be taxed on it if you don't sell. No, it was just a clarification of the lending, borrowing, and staking part of crypto. They still need to come up with a little more clarification on airdrops. It is really expensive, the tax in Japan. It always has been from the very beginning. That's why I think Japan readily adopted the <laughs> uh, cryptocurrency because as a country that has a lot of social services and a declining population they they need the money <laughs> so that 50 up to 55 percent for the taxation on crypto is what it is in japan and that's what it's been there are some people trying to work on bringing it more in line with some of the countries in the west that have close to 20 percent but i don't know if that's going to get passed because like i said they really do need the money here so that is what we have. All right, we're jumping to the fluff, which is just at the end of the year, the citizen brand watch people <laughs> who have been around forever come out with a cherry blossom design. And it's one of those things that everybody looks forward to. So this one is 2019. I think it was pretty beautiful. And then this is the design that they did for 2020. And now the design for year end 2021 is this one. It's really nice, don't you think? I think it's just so pretty. Uh, yeah, it looks good. And in talking about new designs, this is a traditional Furushiki design in Japan. I think it's called Arabesque. Anyway, they um, you have it all over in in Japan. This is a a pet bed, obviously, right? Kind of a futon style. But you know, cats, forget it. There is nothing that they would rather not do than sleep on the floor. No, no, no. Cats like to be up on the bed. So this is what they like. How cute is that? So put the bed on the bed and they are snuggling into their futon. All right, everybody, do take care. Sign off for now. Bye-bye.